Ever felt that awkward feeling at a networking event or been at a buddy's barbecue and they ask, hey, what do you do for a living? By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to handle those situations. Also, for the best tips on how to grow your financial advisor or insurance business, be sure to subscribe to this video. Hit that little bell icon right next to the subscription. Every Friday we release new content. If you are new to our channel, my name is Anthony Anderson, one of the co-founders of Elite Resource Team. We've worked with thousands of financial advisors and insurance agents all across North America, helping them join, build a more enjoyable and profitable business. And in today's video, we are discussing networking. So there's two types of networking here I want you to think about. One is, you know, the events, right? It's like the Friday breakfast club or the Wednesday night social where we're actually intentionally going to an event to network with other professionals. The other is the analogy I used earlier, the buddy's barbecue, where we just happen to be hanging out on a Saturday afternoon, but the topic of business comes up. So these are very different in a way. We have intentional networking and unintentional. But we need to know how to handle both of them. Intentional networking, I went for years to different networking events as a young financial professional. Did I enjoy it? Yeah, initially I did. That's why I think I kept going back. But I don't really wanna harp on this too much because if you don't enjoy those events, I wouldn't encourage you to spend a whole lot of time and money doing it. It's just not necessary in 2020. So that is totally up to you. Unintentional, that's life, man. Like we need to be prepared for that conversation, whether, like I said, it's the holiday party, it's, it's our buddy's barbecue. We need to be prepared for those conversations. So in either situations, what you wanna make sure you have nailed is your value proposition. The way I like to approach this is rather than saying something such as, I am a financial advisor, I do insurance planning, I own a financial business, I like to suggest we use I help blank. So that's your niche, that's who you work with. Some of you have seen me discuss that in some past videos. I help blank by blank. And that's your value proposition. That's what you do for them. So before you go to any intentional networking events, make sure you have this nailed. And also, again, this happens unintentionally in life. So it's worth taking half an hour to think through and write this thing out. And just say it to yourself and practice until you have it nailed. So for me, my background since 2009 has been building strategic partnerships with CPAs. So I help CPAs by allowing them to offer more proactive and holistic planning to their best clients. That's my value proposition, whether it's an intentional networking event or an unintentional networking event. What is it gonna to lead to? Introductions to my ideal clients and questions about what that actually means. So that's the value prop. Here are a couple key things or like tips, best practices. Don't, don't sell, don't sell. We've all been in that awkward situation in a networking event where you meet somebody and they just start throwing up all over you. It's so unattractive. Do not sell, rather learn. Learn about who you are speaking to. Ask questions. The person that asks the questions controls the conversation. So the best way I would like to approach a conversation like this is by asking them about themselves. And then if ultimately it turns out that they are somebody that you think you could help, they fall into your niche, what do you do? You learn about them, you learn about their problems, and then you explain how you help people like them, right? So we're not selling, we're asking questions to learn about them. Then what we're looking for is the law of reciprocity. If you're not familiar with that, that's just the idea that people, once you've done something nice for them, are naturally inclined to want to do something nice back for you, right? So the best way to use the law of reciprocity is with other professionals that we're interested in building a strategic type of relationship with. So as an example, if you are at a networking event or you're at a buddy's barbecue and you're speaking to somebody who turns out to be, let's say a business banker, do you know a business broker, maybe a business attorney? Would that be a good introduction for that person? So I'm not at all thinking about, could this business banker introduce me to new business owner clients? What I'm thinking about is who do I know in my network that I can introduce this individual to. In other words, how can I bring value 
to activate the law of reciprocity. First of all, I'm just doing something good. That's helpful. Fantastic. But more importantly, or at least equally importantly, I'm also now activating this cycle where I do something good and the individual is likely motivated now to say, hey, maybe there are some professionals that I know that I could introduce Anton to, or maybe there's potential clients that I have that I could introduce Anton to. So capitalize on the law of reciprocity at networking events by bringing value wherever possible. And the last tip I have on networking events is to control the controllables. Usually what I'm looking for is not actually meeting my ideal client at a barbecue or at a networking event. If I do, I'm just asking questions. What's more exciting to me than meeting potential clients at a networking event is meeting other individuals or professionals that can introduce me to clients. A client, client might be one opportunity, right? Let's say it's a business attorney or a CPA. That might be 50 opportunities. So I'm interested in activating the law of reciprocity with strategic partnerships that can then give back to this relationship. And I'm really focused on controlling the controllables. Now, please don't comment below that this isn't actually a word. <laughs> it works in this context. And what I'm trying to communicate is how many of us have left things to chance, right? You have any stories about that? Make a comment below. I would love to hear what scenario have you thought you teed up perfectly, forgot a couple variables, and then it blew up in your face. The way I like to control the controllables after any type of networking is I always send a follow-up email to the individual so I'm collecting their information. I get a business card. I don't really care about giving them my business card. I collect the information. I'm sending a follow-up. Hey, it was nice speaking with you. I look forward to getting with, together for coffee next Wednesday. And then when I'm sitting down with them and I'm discussing like next steps. So let's say they do say, hey, you know what? I know a CPA that works with small business owners. I'd love to introduce you. I'd say, fantastic. Let me send you a follow-up email. And all you need to do is forward that email to make sure you get their name. Let's say it's John. So Sally's introducing you to John. So all I need you to do is forward that email to John, CC me, and I'll respond from there. So you type out the introduction email, very short, very professional. You actually insert the name of the individual that is you're being introduced to. You forward that to Sally, right? And then as soon as you get CC'd on that, you're automatically responding. So again, you're controlling the controllables. You really don't want a name and a phone number and then for you to have the responsibility of picking up the phone and calling them without any warm introduction. You also don't want to trust Sally to just write an email because you don't know necessarily what she remembered from your conversation or how she's going to position you. And you always want to be CC'd. So immediately you take control of the next steps of that relationship. So I hope this was helpful. Again, recognize the difference between intentional and unintentional networking. Focus on your value prop, not by selling, not by saying I do, I am, I own, but I help blank or I teach blank or I consult blank, I coach blank by expressing what you actually do, not by selling a product or managing assets, but what's the value they experience from that. Don't sell. Nobody likes being thrown up on. Learn about them, ask questions, control the direction of the conversation, activate the law of reciprocity, and again, always, always control the controllables. Hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like this video. Also, now that we've talked about how to actually get the introduction, what's next? We did film a 20-minute training video on exactly what to do from this initial introduction to building that more profitable and sustainable relationship with each and every individual. You'll find that link in the description below. That's it for today. I hope you found it valuable.